Hey everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. I've actually already filmed this video, but I ran out of space on my SD card because I went on too long rambling and then the video was too long for me to download. So now I'm going to try to redo this and either cut it down a little bit shorter or we're going to split the video up and upload it into sections. So we're going to see how that works. Fingers crossed that works. So go ahead and get started. Go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button down below if you really, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help you girl out here. Without further ado, let's get on with this topic of the video. So today's video is a little bit more personal. It's a little bit more sentimental to me and it's also a little bit more serious and so if you hear my roommates screaming ignore them they're crazy so anyway if you hear anything going on in the background I live with other people and sometimes they're loud so I apologize but today's topic is a little bit more serious and I do not know all the answers I'm gonna say that right now everyone's talked to their own belief I'm not here to press my beliefs on anyone but I am here to share my story about my beliefs I'm not gonna get into any debates about different denominations of Christianity I'm not here to do anything like that I'm here to just share my story in a small part um, this would not be crazy in detail just kind of just give you guys a rundown of my testimony it's nothing that's in detailed and it's not going to be real lengthy because I learned I can't do that without my video freaking out on me. So we're just kind of going to get straight to the point, give you kind of like a rough overview of my life and who I am today and why I am who I am today. So here we go. Without further ado, let's get on with the story. So I grew up in Christianity. I grew up going to church. I grew up in the Bible Belt south of the United States, Southern America, and we were forced to be in the Bible Belt. We had no options. You were Christian or you weren't, and the majority of the people were Christian. I grew up around Christians. I grew up going to church. I grew up going to Christian schools. I grew up just in general in the faith. I was very active and involved in church ministries, so children's ministries I was very involved in, vacation Bible school I was very involved in, summer camps every summer, whatever Christian based I was involved in. I did everything and I was a pretty good Christian for a little kid. I believed in God, I loved God, and I believed he was, he, Jesus died for my sins. Like I believed the basics, I believed the gospel. It was simple, it was to the point, and it was faith of a child, and I had that faith. Um, my faith was good up until about the time when things started to go wrong, and here's where my testimony really starts. So I wanted to basically just give you a rough overview to let you know that I did grow up in faith, so I wasn't raised without faith, like I was raised with faith. But this goes to show that no matter what background you come from, it's so easy to fall off from God. And not to judge, because it can happen to anyone. And to give yourself a little bit of grace, it happened to you. So, I grew up going to church, as I said, and I became very involved in my church's youth group. My church's youth group was very active in our church. We did different things every summer, every day during the school year. We were very involved. They were more than just my youth group. They were actually my friend group. They were the people I considered my friends. I hung out with them all the time. Some of them went to my school, some of them didn't. But either way, they were my friends. I really enjoyed hanging out with them. So, it came to be before, the summer before my freshman year of high school, when things really went downhill for me. I had recently recovered from an eating disorder, and I had a great friend. I met him when I was nine years old. Eight or nine, actually. I want to say I was nine. I think I was nine. I was nine years old. And I loved him as a brother. He was one of the nicest guys I've ever known. We talked about everything. If I had anything going on in my life, I sent him a text so quick to talk to him. And he was the person that no matter what, if I was having a bad day, he would reach out to me and talk to me. I'm not going to say his name. I'm not going to talk too much about what happened. I'm going to briefly mention it and how what it did to affect me and my faith but if i want to make a video about this story i will another day with permission from his family but i did lose him to suicide um and losing your friend to suicide at 14 years old is a lot it's a lot to handle um you go through lots of different feelings you go from just normal shock to just normal grief to hating yourself for feeling like you were not there to help them, to anger for them, like being mad at them. It's a lot and I can go on for days about how that grief in general and how that affected me. But 
you know, at first, the death didn't affect my Christianity. But it was the cattle pole. It was like the one little rock that like pushed the edge and created an avalanche. Because he did not cause my faith losing faith. But reactions to his death did. Um, at first it was fine. Um, I would go to you. Excuse me, I'm sorry. That was an instinct yawn. I don't know why I'm yawning. It's a serious topic. But um, I went to youth and we had therapy and we were kind of getting closer. But then something crazy happened. Um, some girls kind of clicked up and decided that the way I was grieving was not the way they were grieving or decided I wasn't allowed to grieve with them. Um, the three of them would go and like cry and do their own little thing and I was never allowed to be a part of it. Like if they would go off and have like a moment, I was never allowed to be there too, even though I would be in the same room, going through the exact same emotions and feelings. And at 14, that's hard to understand. It's hard to understand that it's not you. It's just they're going through something right now and they just don't think you get it. Even though it hurt my feelings, cause I did. I did get it. He was my friend too. And he was very close. We were very close. We would may not realize how close we were, but he knew a lot of things about me. Like I talked to him every day. Every day. And I just don't think people knew that. But we kind of kept it on the DL. He had a girlfriend. I didn't want people getting the wrong idea. He didn't want people getting the wrong idea. We were just good friends. And we talked about personal things that not everybody needed to know. And I started to feel distant from those girls in that youth group because I felt like they were just kind of excluding me from everything. And then it kind of just got worse and worse as I kept attending and I felt very unwelcomed and unwanted. Um, the preacher's daughter actually made me feel the most unwelcome and unwanted in the entire group, if I'm going to be honest. Um, and I think that was the biggest turnoff for me because in my mind, and I'm not looking at care because I'm kind of like, thinking I won't express my words carefully here but in my mind I thought these are supposed to be the people who are loving God they're supposed to be showing kindness and love and compassion and grace and mercy and all these things and they're treating me horribly they're mean to me they make me feel like the scum of the earth why would I want to be one of them why would I want to be like them they're mean the people who are nice to me aren't Christian. I'd rather be like them. And so I stopped hanging out with them. I stopped hanging out with the church kids. I didn't want to be around them anymore. They were mean. They hurt my feelings. I didn't want anything to do with them. I hung out with people outside the church. Some were still Christian, but they weren't like actual Christians in the sense that they followed what they preached. You know, they were just kind of like normal Southern people. They said they were Christian and did whatever the heck they wanted. And that's what I started to do. I would go to youth if I was forced to by my parents, or go to church if I was forced to by my parents, but I didn't really believe in God. I said I did. <laughs> I said I did, just not get in trouble, but I was just living my life however the heck I wanted, making whatever choices I wanted, sinning left and right and getting involved in things I shouldn't have been getting involved in. Peer pressure is real, and peer pressure will tempt you into doing crazy things, and I was tempted to do crazy things, and I did it, because sin looks great when you are a sinner you are drawn to sin you want to sin sin is fun the devil wouldn't make sin unpleasurable the devil makes sin fun for a reason so i was a sinner a horrible sinner at the age of like 16. it was bad and looking back i swear like slap myself upside the head because i'm like girl get your life together you're like ah i think so mad um then i got involved in a very toxic relationship a relationship that I think honestly took everything out of me, um, made me feel less than dirt. I, but when we broke up, when we finally broke up, I felt like I wasn't, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know who I was anymore. Who was I without this boy? And I was sad. He had somehow manipulated me into thinking he was my only ticket in life. And he wasn't. <laughs> Gosh knows he wasn't. But at the time, he was my only friend. I lost all my friends. I was alone. I was depressed. And when I say I was depressed, guys, I say I cried myself to sleep every night for three months straight. 
My mom was so scared. She was scared to leave me alone sometimes, I think, because she thought I was going to die. I was never suicidal because I knew what suicide did. But, <laughs> boy, did I think about it. <laughs> I'm actually going to cut this off for just a second, and then I'm going to come back and film the second half because I'm going to run out of space with this SIM card. I'll be right back, and we're going to talk about when I went to college and what changed. Hey, so I'm back. So basically, after I had a really rough summer, after my senior year of high school, I was talking about how I was very depressed and was crying myself to sleep pretty much every night. So then I knew in my head that the next biggest change in my life was going to be college. And I was looking so forward to college. I said, things will be different in college. And boy, were they different. I literally spent so much time my freshman year just going out and partying and doing what I thought I was supposed to do. I had fun. I had a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. It was good fun. Uh, at first, it really didn't start off too bad. It started off just me doing the college thing, having some fun with some girlfriends, nothing too crazy. It didn't get crazy until about midway through the year when I started taking going out and using it to distract me from the actual pain that was going on in my heart. I had some severe issues that are going on in my heart and my soul and this empty longingness that I was fulfilling with going out, the loneliness in my heart I was distracting with filling it up with partying and doing things I shouldn't have been doing. So I started to also turn to boys. I used boys as my coping mechanism. If I wanted to feel like I was worth something, I let a boy tell me I was worth something. <clears throat> And again, I'm not going to go into too much detail in this video. I am not in a place in my life where I can share every bad choice I've ever made on the internet. I'm just not, I'm not in a place in my life where I can do that. Maybe one day I will be, and I'd be open to. But on the internet right now, I am not open to sharing every bad choice I've ever made. But I am going to give you kind of like the overview, like a skim of the surface. But basically, I was using boys and what they thought of me to tell me I was worth something. I was worth living. I was worth being here. I was beautiful. I was good at something. This was what I was worth. And that's unhealthy. That's a very unhealthy. What you do with your life is not my business. I don't care. I can give you advice based on what I believe in with God, but it is not my right to tell you what to do. It's God's right to tell you what to do, not me. It's the Bible's right to tell you what to do, not me. But I was doing things because I needed validation. And that's not healthy. That's very much not healthy. And I continued to doing this throughout quarantine. Um, you know, I quarantined, but then when things opened back up, I started using guys' attention again to make me feel good. And then I had a rude awakening. I had an eye-opening moment that made me realize, oh my God, who am I? I said, I am not proud of the person I am. I am disgusted at the person I am, and I need to change. I am not proud of this Maddie. I don't like her. I don't like this version of me. And so I went home and opened my Bible for the first time in over a year. I had already committed to working at a summer camp that summer because I love working with kids. I love kids. And it was a Christian camp, and I knew that. But I was like, that's not a problem. Like, it's a Christian camp, whatever, not a big deal. And then I started reading my Bible over the summer, and I said, wow, I am ashamed. I said, this is n not who I want to be. Because I was reading the Word of God, and then comparing it with who, the choices I was making, and they did not line up. The life I was supposed to be living as a Christian was not lining up to my actions at all. It was bad. It was really bad. So I said, you know, I don't know if I can do this summer camp. You know, like, I am dirty. I am gross. I am the biggest sinner I have ever known. How can I go and teach these little girls about God? How am I going to do that? But God kept telling me to go. God kept telling me to go. He was pestering me in my brain to go. And I said, fine, God, we'll go. And I packed up my bags and went to camp. I'm so glad I did. That 
at summer camp. As cheesy as it sounds, I think truly saved my life. I had no cell phone service, had no Wi-Fi, no air conditioning, and no distractions. All I had was the earth, my campers, and the people around me, and God. And that camp felt like God was there every step of the way. Not only did he allow us to open during COVID, he allowed us to open and not one person contract the disease. Name something besides God that could do that. We wore a mask. We made the kids wear a mask. We wore a mask. And as the state and government gave us new orders, we followed. And we said if the government tells us to close down or things get too dangerous, we will. But at the time, God gave us the opportunity to open, so we did. And nobody got sick. Explain that to me. I don't know how that happened, but I went to camp and I was surrounded by fellow believers. And they poured into me and they poured into me. My cup was filled. I talked to the camp director who consistently poured into me and the other counselors about faith. I left that camp a new dedicated member of Christ. I said, I am going to be a follower of Christ. And I went home for two weeks. And now I was going to go back to camp to work my last session. And those two weeks I was home, I was reading my Bible, I was doing devotionals, I was doing what I had to do, I was going to churches, but at the time churches were closed, so I was like doing my online services, like I was working my little booty off, went back to camp, was super devoted, did devotionals every night, did devotionals every morning, I was a part of this, and at the end of camp, I decided I'm getting re-baptized in the Guadalupe River, because I was baptized as a baby, but I didn't make that decision for myself, and I was like, you know, I'm 20 years old. I want to change my life right now and follow Christ. Something in my heart awoken at that camp. I had felt more happy, more stress-free than I had felt in over two years. So I went in that river and I got baptized. And since that moment, my life has been different. I am involved in a local church. I attend every Sunday and every Wednesday. I strive to be like Christ. I do have notes, so I'm sorry if I look fake. I'm really, I'm just looking at my notes to make sure I stay on track. Anyway, I strive to be like Christ each and every day of my life. Like, I am never going to be perfect. But as followers of Christ, we're supposed to strive to be like Him. And I strive each and every day to be more like Christ. I make major changes to my social life. I love the people I hung out with before I was saved. I love them with all my heart. But I know now that I need to be surrounded by other saved people or people who want to be saved. So I can be surrounded by people who have similar mindset as me, people who also want to strive to be better Christians, people who also love God. I need those people in my life to help me and keep me on track, to keep me dedicated, to call me out when I'm doing things I shouldn't be doing. I need those people in my life. I need to break old habits, and I'm still breaking them every day. Sometimes it's hard. It's hard to break old habits. Old habits die hard, but I'm working on it each and every day. And there are some habits that I broke that day in, that, that day in June. I said, I'm not doing this again. I've not done it since, and I'm very proud of that. There are, I try to read my Bible more. Now, am I perfect? No, but I try to read my Bible at least once a day. In some way, shape, and form, I try to delve into the Word because the Word is the only way for us to see what God wants. The only way we can truly understand God is by reading His Word. So I delve into that every day. I go to church as often as I can. We do a Wednesday night service and we do a Sunday. Like I said, I go as often as I can. There are days where I miss because I'm out of town or I just have a lot of schoolwork, so I miss. But I try not to. I try to devote my time wisely so I can go. And I'm in a small group. I'm a part of a small group that meets every Thursday and we discuss what we went over on Wednesday. And I love it. It's created such a great community and atmosphere for me. It's absolutely amazing. I love ministry, and I'm thinking about going to get my master's in children's or youth ministry. I'm a child life major. I love working with children, but I am thinking about maybe going to get my master's in children's ministry. I think I would love to work with kids in some aspect of the church, whether that's just being a children's pastor or a youth pastor or working and operating my own 
my own program one day, operating a children's camp, operating some type of foundation. I don't know, but like I have a, a random draw in my heart to do that. And I'm not 100% certain on it yet, but I am kind of curious about what God has. And I'm kind of leaning into it and tasting it and seeing, seeing what all of it's about and making sure I'm being called in the right direction. So this has kind of been a rough draft overview of my testimony. Um, I can't go into crazy detail because YouTube policies, professionalism, and just life in general that I can't go into too much detail about. Also, because of time, I don't feel like boring you guys with everything. Maybe one day I can like write it all down or something. I don't know. But, or public speak about it. Who knows? But, this is the first time I've ever like shared my testimony in a little bit more detail to the public. So, I'm very excited. Um, I'm hoping you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a little everywhere, a little scatterbrained. But this kind of topic's vulnerable for me, and it's hard for me to really stay on track with it. So I hope you enjoyed it in some way, and I hope that my story helps someone to know that you're never too far gone to love God. You're never too far gone to say, God, I need you, and I'm sorry, and I'm here to change. It's okay, and not everyone was blessed to be introduced to Christ at a young age and stay with Christ. And that sucks, but it's never too late to say, God, I messed up. Please take me back. Like the prodigal son story, his son was lost, but now he's found. And that's what we need to be. We need to be lost, but it's okay now because we're found. So you need to find your way back to God, apologize for your sins, and change your life. And you'll be okay. You're worthy of that. If I'm worthy of that, you're worthy of that. So I'm thinking about each and every one of you every day. If you ever need anything, feel free to reach out in person or online if you know me in person. If you don't, please don't stalk me. <laughs> but I'm always here for anyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed some of my story. And I hope you guys have had your own stories and are eventually are able to share your story as well. We're called to share the gospel. And this is my first step. Thank you guys for watching. Jesus loves you. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.